Alright, so I've done the first part of the alignment. I've got my steering mirrors in, I've got the cavity in the right place, and I've got a camera at the back which can see the transmission through the cavity. Uh, so the first thing to do was to get this beam to the right height and then send it down the cavity axis. And then I can see how it's reflecting back that the beam is coming out on an angle. Um, ideally I want to define the cavity axis by having the beam hit the mirror roughly in the centre. It's quite a big curved mirror, so you don't have to hit it directly in the centre. I want to hit it roughly in the centre so that the transmission comes out the back and I can check I can, with my hands. Uh, I can see a weak red light coming through which tells me I'm going to be able to see the transmission because at the back, um, I'll show you later, there is only a small aperture where light will actually transmit through the mirror and not be clipped by the um, aluminium casing. So. Yeah, so then I'm tuning the steering mirrors so that it's hitting the middle and it's coming back down the same axis, not going off to the side, because ultimately I want the beam to be resonant, so it has to be coming in and then back and then back again. So now that I've got this axis, the idea is I just put in my input mirror in between. So I fit my input mirror to the axis. Um, whereas if I had done it the other way around, I put the input mirror in, I couldn't see any of the light going through because a lot of it would be attenuated by passing through this, which is 90 something percent reflective, 99. So I'd lose all the light and then I'd have no way of knowing where it's going unless I get lucky and happen to have it resonant. If it's resonant, there'll be a big build up, so then I'll get something. But until then, I don't. So. I've already defined it, so now I can just put this in at the right distance. Should be about here. First thing I'm going to fix is the uh, mount. As I said, I'll try and make it a little bit shorter, if any. So fix this. Now, to make sure it's aligned, this is in line with the existing axis, all I have to do is make sure that the beam hitting this mirror comes back along the same way. So I've adjusted the curvature of this mirror so that the beam reflected and therefore the beam passing through is a not on an angle, just going straight through, okay, and straight back. Uh, if, it was a, if it was off, then I would see the reflection also reflect which would imply that there's some angle between the beam and the normal of this curved mirror, right? The normal of the curved mirror should be aligned with the incoming beam. Um, so that there's no refraction and also no reflection on the, on the reflected beam at an angle, reflection at an angle. So let me find it. So there it is, so it's coming off to my left. And because it's quite far, I might just adjust it this way first. Rough adjustment. And then use these tilts vertical until the beams come inside. 
I'm looking at the beam spot now on the mirror, on this steering mirror. All right, now let's have a look at our camera. So the lights, I'm gonna to have to turn the lights off so I don't saturate the camera. Right. Now I'm going to film a monitor. Let's go a bit closer. Yes. I'm sure this is not the best way I could be doing this. Recording the video, but I'm not sure if it's actually saving. Alright, so this is just the webcam, and we can see the different. This is a Laguerre Gaussian mode. So the, all these all these mode shapes are different modes that can be excited inside the cavity. We want the zero zero mode, right? The Gaussian mode. That's what our input is. And that's where we would get maximum um, coupling efficiency. Um, it's also the one that they tend to use for all optical and well, a lot of optical and optomechanical experiments because it's the easiest one to model. Okay, it's the easiest one to understand. And um, often, you know, when you just want to push something with radiation pressure, so this is more to do with the field of optomechanics. Uh, you just want you just want a force. Um, just a simple one-dimensional force so the, the spot, the Gaussian mode is your best bet. Now the reason why they're not always resonant is because the cavity length is changing. So this is me tapping on the table now. Right, so you can see this flashing. Ideally what we want to do is uh, we want to drive our cavity with a high voltage amplifier. So I'm going to turn the lights back on. So, let me adjust this. This is our little mini high voltage amplifier. And what we can do is we can adjust the cavity length by connecting to that piezo there. Okay? So that's what we want to do now. instruction manual. Uh, I'm not sure if you have this online. Ideally we make this available so you can at least have a look at it. Um, but the gain is 20 times. So whatever I input across it, it will give me times 20 of that. Uh, the maximum voltage 100 is 150, which um, is also the maximum voltage of the piezo. So if you try and drive the piezo with more than that, um, you will destroy them pretty quickly. And you know, these piezos are uh, essentially just little chips that expand based on um, how much voltage you put across. So again, this should be also put online. Um, so that's a little picture of one of them. 150 volts maximum, and then move about two micrometers. So one question is: Is two micrometers far enough? How you know if we want to sweep through all these modes? How far do we need to sweep? So maybe you can answer that in your book. Uh, that's an important kind of thing to understand. You know, like what what length scale is relevant? What length scale is important in this cavity? Centimeters, millimeters, you know, how far do we need to move? Um, so this is connected. It's not on. Then the light's up to me. So we'll plug this.
actually not plugged in. So on the knob here, we've got a vertical offset, uh, sorry, DC offset. But then we can also drive this using our function generator. So what I'll do is I'll um, set that up and then come back. 